doing great things. So thank you for having me on yeah. the podcast. Well, and that's a great entry point with your point right there. And, and, and I think that me doing this, I've realized that we're way more united than we are divided. I think mm -hmm. there's this, this, this idea that we are all on separate sides, but we all have this general notion of having a good life down here. And I think that under the whole COVID microscope, it kind of brought that, it illuminated the soul a little bit more. And mm -hmm. And and that's where I'd like to start here. You know, we're going on the four year anniversary of this pandemic. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna say the show, but okay. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. So I wanna go back to 2020. How did you survive the pandemic and how did it subsequently change you? You know, that's a really interesting conversation. So I'm an executive coach and a business psychologist and 2020 was quite devastating for me. Um, it was, I was what is termed as an associate coach, meaning, you know, my bread and butter came uh, based on how many coaching coaching sessions that I had. I've always worked for coaching firms and that's been brilliant for me because it means I've learned to work to volume. So I was working at that volume and making, you know, pretty decent money, you know, and then suddenly people weren't being coached. People didn't want to go into the office where we were based. I was based in the heart of London in, um, in, in uh, just off London bridge. So people weren't traveling in. So it devastated me on that level financially. It devastated me. Uh, like I said, I was in the music business for years. It devastated. It was one of the first big cases, um, losses in the music business in during that period was uh, a, a recording artist named Ty and um, he died. He succumbed to the early uh, early phase of, of COVID that brought a level of fear. Then I had uh, my a sister, not biological, but my half brothers and sisters, youngest sister um, died as well. Um, there, it was a lot of fear, um, but then there was this there was this one point that I thought, you know what? No, 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 no. Um, I was also studying. I was also studying to become a psychologist, and I was in the masters. And we went from being in person to literally doing the whole thing online, which was new. So I had to dig deep um, in that self belief and 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 stand on my confidence in myself and my ability to get through no matter what. And like most people, I needed to get financial uh, assistance from the government. And I tell you, that was a bit of an ego blow. But at the same time, knowing that this was a, a, a means to an end and, and it would end and it did. And um, to, during that period, I was working for a company as an associate. And so I knew I needed a full-time contract. So I landed in one job then changed that job in around 2021, 22, and then went full-time for the coaching firm that I'm working for now, which has been an absolute, uh, just a, a great, great place to be. And so it was, it was, it was devastating on multiple levels, but like I said, digging deep, um, and just being me, you know, a, a believer in, in, in my own abilities and not being kind of, if they say, if they say you can't get through that door, I'm like, yes, I can. Yeah. I'm going to crawl under that door. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to get through that door. And so that has led me to, you know, really being successful at what I do, just that internal resilience and resolve and, uh, and, 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 I, and believing in something greater, greater than myself has helped for sure. So let's get to the heart of what you do on a daily basis. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. And one of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I'd say to them, you know how a coach can make you a better player? And they would say, yeah, well, that's what I do. I make people like your mom and your dad perform better at work. What did you want to be in the third grade? A pediatrician. Okay. Mm -hmm. So take me back to where you were born and raised. You're a singer. How did all of these things evolve into who you are today, into the profession you chose? Okay, okay. So I was born to parents who were in the music business. My father um, was, a, was a performer, but he was mostly a producer, songwriter, working with the likes of Bo Diddley, Ray Charles. My mother met him at a very young age. She was like 18, 19 years old. She met him fell in love with this older guy and she was a professional singer herself. So, you know, it was an opportunity, I think as well. 
Um, so I grew up with a mother singing around the house. Um, but I I just had this 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 natural ability to care for people. And so if my I have a twin brother, so if my twin brother scraped his knee, I was coming with the tape and and gauze and stuff. And so I thought that that was the thing. Um, then tragically, my mother she passed away at 35 years old, leaving you know five kids behind, uh, a dream of uh, an unfulfilled dream, even though she had made countless uh, recordings with my father, she, she was never, she never got to see that through. And just me being me, I just had this, this idea just, and I was not the, the singer in the family, my sister, incredible singer, but I had this idea that I would go ahead and I would sing mm -hmm. and I would do what she didn't get to do. Yeah. And that led me down that path in the music business. So and then, then that shifted and Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then nurturing. So what was the first live show that you ever saw that blew you away? That I ever saw that blew me away. The Jackson Five, the Jackson nice. Five Victory Tour. I was me, in high, high school. Were you there? Me, me too. I saw it at Arrowhead. <laughs> My dad okay. was a car salesman. He won tickets. And that glove uh, came up out of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> we waited forever and then all of a sudden the rhinestones on the glove and everybody's fainting it's like a Beatles show oh my god oh my god so I think that was it and then the second one was Prince Prince was wow. it Prince and the Revolution yeah. I think it was that and so yeah those were like those concerts that blew my mind wow yeah I never got to see Prince but man everybody that talks about seeing that just like yeah. it's crazy twice. twice yeah that's wild in the 80s I guess and then like later in the maybe in 2000, something like that in LA. Yeah. Um, and it was, that was incredible because it was really about him. White, big, big white grand piano. I mean, just never forget it. Never forget inspiration. So, so he played at a place called Kemper Arena here in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And after the show, he went to a blues club called the Grand Emporium. And they mm -hmm. closed the doors and told everybody out front, mm -hmm. if you guys want tickets, you're right here. Let's do it. And he played a, a a local club and just tore it up. I I know people who who uh, were able to do things like that and see him in London like that. I didn't. <laughs> that that's when you know he has the heart of a true musician. When when hmm. people do that, you yeah. know they love what they're doing. Love it, absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So who's been a hero for you in your life? Who's been a hero? That's a good question. Let me think. Who's been a hero? Um, so I would say, you know, who's been a hero are people who I've never met. So I have this fondness for Angela Davis. So she was just the social, you know, social warrior and she's still alive as far as I'm concerned. No, um, she, she's been really pivotal in my life. I think, you know, when you're a girl, your dad's your hero. But as I got older, particularly going into, you know, kind of shifting out of that music business, which was really my mother's dream, you know, my dream was always going to be in the caring profession. So, uh, and being a, well, you know, just, just a stand up. I wrote this book. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to, I'm going to shamelessly plug it. Yeah, please do. Unleash, please do. Unleashing Brilliance, a roadmap yes. to confidence for black professionals. It's on Amazon. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I say Angela Davis because she believed in people. She believed in change and she's still doing incredible work. And I look at her as someone who understands the assignment, right? Yeah. Like my work is something that I understand the assignment and the assignment is to help people. The assignment is to help people get out of their own way, to becoming better, to becoming fiercer. You know, I've been called the unlock expert by a top guy in a big pharma company when I helped the woman who was right in succession get out of her own way to unlock her. And and I and I like when people do that. Someone like an Angela Davis will always be special in my heart, you know, powerhouse. And yeah, I for think sure. powerhouse. <laughs> yes. So let me ask you this. If you could meet one person alive on the planet right now that you find inspirational, who would that be? Oh, I mean, I just said it. It would be Angela Davis. I didn't want to assume, but yeah. My hands are sweating, even at the idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll the put idea, it out there. I would just be like, oh. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So you know? let me ask you this. 
obviously for someone like Angela, there's there's a lot of motivation that goes into who they are as a human. Mm -hmm. What is that for you that gets you out of bed every day that helps you help people, but you also have to take care of yourself and evolve? What is mm -hmm. that overall motivation for you every day? That is such a good one. I think knowing that, I think everyone has a responsibility to themselves to 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 be who they're meant to be in this life. And so that motivation is get up, girl, you've got work to do because legacy is created every day that you show up being the best version of yourself. And if your child, I have a daughter, you know, she's a young woman now, she has seen me evolve, you know? So it's, it's the personal, internal knowing that you have this one life, get up and, and do it well and do it right. I wasted a lot of time when I was younger in the music business. It's all the, you know, it's all the hype, drugs, rock and roll. It was all that, yeah. you know, but there was something inside of me saying, nah, you know, girl, can we, can we, can you can go to the edge, but can we like get back over here where we're supposed to be? Yeah. And, you know, age, you know, but, but knowing there's something more knowing yeah. there's something driving me and it, and it, and it is me go. And yeah. I think we have to, we have to get out of our own way. Mm -hmm. A lot of the problem is we're in our own way and we're yeah. stuck in these habits. And I talk about habit formation. I talk about mastery of behavior. Most of what we're doing is just on automatic pilot. And so when we're on automatic pilot, we're not focused, we're not present. So we're not even aware of what we're doing. It's just a behavior. Yeah. It's just a behavior pattern. And so when I say get out of your own way, I'm saying be present, be present. Actually look at Joe. What, what, what's, look at this beautiful, incredible painting behind him. Look at the details. I noticed your, your sweater. And at first I thought, is it dinner? Most people don't look at the details. They're not present. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. And I think I always remember a quote from a poet, one of my favorite ones, we're born geniuses and buried idiots. We, <laughs> all right. <That's> harsh. <laughs> it is, but it's the idea that all of these walls get put up and we we do get on autopilot. And mm -hmm. the older we get, the more afraid we get. We don't we aren't as adventurous because children are just little flowers flopping around. Right. And just everything's courage with them, right. you know. And then slowly it gets sapped out because the world tells us what we're supposed to do, you know. Right. Oh, that's so, so well said. Yeah. But uh but there's a way to get to go against it. Let me ask you this. What's been the best fan letter you've ever gotten? Best client response that you've ever gotten? So I, I'm blessed to 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 work with people who will, you know, give feedback. So they'll get a feedback form. And I think it, 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 there's a theme around KK helped me see things with more clarity. And first session, I'm able to walk away with some actionable steps and I feel better than I, than I did when I first came in. So of all of the things that you've done, become, overcome, evolved into, what are you the proudest of? My daughter. You know, I know that might sound cheesy, but she was, you know, I had a struggle. I had lost babies. I had had ectopic pregnancies. So my journey to motherhood was, was very tough, you know? And so, and even when we were pregnant with my daughter, um, well, I was pregnant, <laughs> it, they, it, you know, I had that, a bleed and it was, I was in the hospital and they said, oh no, you're losing, you know, a very early stage, you're losing it. And then they went in to do the surgery and they were like, no, she's, I woke up and I said, where's my baby? And they said, she's still, the baby's still there. And so, she just held on and it was like, we're rocking and rolling. And I had a really tough pregnancy. I was in pain constantly. Um, and, but she held on and she was like, I'm coming, I'm coming for you. And, and our relationship is beautiful. So she is, yeah. she is the best thing that's ever happened to me. That's wonderful. So let me ask you this. If you had, speaking of youth, if you had a dream tonight, ran into the 18 year old version of you, you can mm. give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom that you've gained in your life. What mm. advice would you impart on that young version of you? Stop smoking weed. 
You don't need we to disappear, KK. My first name is Karim. You don't need the weed, weed baby. Find, find, find a therapist. You know, I know you've gone through trauma, but you don't need that. It's going to slow you down and you've got so much to do. Yeah. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> the best advice I've ever gotten. I just got some advice from uh, Xavier Eichencrotter. Now, he is the father of Reverend Ike. I don't know if anybody would know who he was back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, but uh, I'm in a book club with him. And and what I heard, because quite often, sometimes it's so amazing, you get this thing, you don't have exact words, but he said, just, just go, KK. Just let it come, let it come to you. Just let what you desire come to you. And that advice really meant something. So much so that um, I hired my first, uh, my first uh, employee, my first employee. So um, on, a, on some side work that I'm doing, my publishing, my self-publishing business. Um, so that was, that was great advice. So let's say we get off this Zoom call a time machine pulls up and you can go anywhere in time and see one event in human history with your own eyes. Where are you going? Where am I going? I'm going to sit in the room with Einstein when he finishes that calculation for, for was it the laws of relativity? Yeah. When he finishes that calculation. I just want to see what he felt like. What was it like? Did he yeah. doubt himself? Was he in it? I know that seems strange, but. That's doubt, great. No, um, I love that. I've never heard that. And I may never hear it again. That's, <laughs> that's why that's why I deal in jazz because it happens once and it's it's in the air. It's It's gone. <laughs> so let me ask you this. If anyone out there wants to, actually, this is my final question for you. Everyone has a perception of you, family, mm -hmm. friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Now, this is, I'm going to take it on a spiritual level. Okay. At this point in everything that I do, I believe that there's, there's something greater. Um, I'm not really running the show. I feel as though I'm a, I'm a, a vessel to help people that there's almost like a, a download that when I sit in front of my clients, I'm able to perceive what's really below the surface. So I'm not running the show. Gotcha. So let me ask you this. If anyone wants to hire you, get your book, learn more about you, any of the good business, where do they go? They're going to go over to LinkedIn, KK Harris, career strategist. They can go over to my Instagram, which is Miss. KK Harris, Miss underscore KK Harris. And um, they can find out more on those two places. And on my YouTube is KK Harris, uh, KK's uh, career, career advice. Excellent. KK, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for your story. Thank, Thank you for your you. time. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope we get together another time. Absolutely. Be Take great. Care Thank yourself. you.